Where else in the world could you gather in November outdoors and worship God? Amen? Certainly not in Minnesota where I'm from. So, hey, it is great to be back at night of worship. And as Roy said, whether you're watching uh, at home online or whether you're down here in the parking lot or whether you're here in the courtyard snuggled up next to one of those heaters, uh, we're just so thankful you're here tonight. So a couple of weeks ago, I had this amazing experience. I uh, just returned from Nebraska where my wife and I had gone out to spend some time with our daughter and son and son-in-law as they welcomed their, their second baby boy. And so Amy and I, uh, Amy stayed a couple of weeks. Yeah, Amy stayed a couple of extra weeks um, so that she could take care of mama and baby. And uh, I came back. And so I came back and I got back and uh, it was a Monday morning and it was one of those typical foggy mor- you know, mornings here that we get lots of days, right? And so I decided I was going to go out for a walk. So I took our 10-month-old puppy and decided to go for a walk. And it was just kind of gray and cloudy and overcast and the mist was coming down. And, you know, I had a lot of things kind of weighing on me. You know, I was kind of concerned about this whole COVID thing. And I was concerned about you. I was concerned about the church. I was concerned about how you're doing in this. And I was concerned about the children, especially my wife's a school teacher. And I just know how hard it has been for children and for families. And so I had all these concerns kind of weighing me down. And of course, I was concerned about our nation, having served our country for 32 years in the military, very concerned for our nation. So just w- thinking about you know, the election coming up and all this stuff kind of weighed me down. So I decided to go up on the trails up behind our house in South Salinas. And as I was walking up, you know, cloudy, gray, but as I got up to the top of this mountain, the top of this, this well, I call it a mountain, but it's really more of a hilltop. But I got up there, and as I got up there, that's what I tell you, I turned to my left And I look, and there to my left, all the way to the east, I can see this layer of fog that has covered the Salinas Valley. And all the way across, I see clearly the pinnacles. And just cresting the pinnacles is the beauty of the morning sun. And it just took my breath away. And standing there on that hill, I was reminded that God was reminding me to keep life in perspective. And it was as if he was showing off because the fog was below and I had clear. So on that day, I I could see with clarity and I was standing confidently and I knew with absolute certainty that God is in control. And just as beautiful as that that, that revealing that God did that morning in his creation, as beautiful as that is, it's equally beautiful when we can turn to God's word because we need to understand that we have to be seeking and keeping the right perspective in life. And one of the, I would say one of the most important verses to me in my life that reminds me of this eternal truth to keep and seek the right perspective in life is found in Romans And it comes at at the point in Romans where Paul has been taking us up this journey up the mountain in Romans. He starts in in, in chapter 1, as we've learned, as we've been taking a journey through Romans, where Paul actually brings us and he shows us the depth of sin. And then Paul begins to take us up this mountain, and we learn about sanctification and justification through Jesus Christ and faith alone in Christ. And then we get to this beautiful verse. It's Romans 11, verse 36. And this is what that says. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. One powerful verse, but in this condensed form, we learn that God is sovereign over all. Amen? The most concise version of that in the Bible. This is a foundational truth that we have in our scripture and that we can hold on to and cling to in times of uncertainty, in times of confusion, in times of trial and trouble. And what we know about this verse is it is eternally true and that all of creation and all of history declares this and reflect this eternal truth. See, everything in the entire universe comes from God, through God, and it's for God. And that's Paul's point here. This beautiful song of praise that he punctuates with those words, those three prepositions, from, through, and for. 
So from him, we know that God is the source of all things. He is the creator. He is the architect of all things. All things come from his sovereign will and by his gracious hands. He is creator God, and he is a good God. Because God's very nature is good, and therefore what God creates, it reflects his nature, his character. God creates what is good. In Genesis 1-1, we remember those words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You see, God is the cause and all of creation for all of eternity is the effect. God is the cause. And what he creates is good. When he created human beings, humans, it was very good. And so we know that the vastness and the goodness of God is revealed in his creation. We also know that everything comes through him. See, God is the means of all things. God is also the administrator of all things. God is the executor of all things. Like we have an executor of the estate. God is the executor of all things for all time in all of creation. And not only is God a creator God, but he is a sustainer God. See, our God, he's not distant. He is active in his creation, working in and through his creation. And of course, because God is sovereign and God is uh, working through his creation, we know that nothing is random. Nothing in all of eternity is random. Everything has a divine purpose and comes through the hands and by the will of God. And whose hands do we see? We think of God, the triune God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We read this beautiful verses in Colossians 1, 16 and 17, and we see that it's Jesus. And we read in here, it says, For in him, and that's Jesus, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Sound familiar? And verse 17, he is before all things and in him all things hold together. Isn't that a beautiful picture of Jesus created, created? He's the creator. He is the one that existed before time he is the one that existed outside of space, and he creates, and he sustains. And in him, all things are held together. And so even in those times when it seems that God is doing nothing, or maybe it's times of great uncertainty or undecided elections, God is still sovereign over all creation, amen? And he's constantly at work. He's constantly at work bringing about the completion of his perfect plan for all of humanity. You see, I heard a pastor once say, and I love the way he put it. He said, for God, there is no plan B. There's no plan C. There is only plan A. And God has a plan, and he is still working that plan. Amen? And the last part is for him. You see, God is the goal of all things. He is the aim or the purpose of all things, and all things are for his sovereign glory. He is the glorified God, and everything that God has created and everything that God has allowed ultimately is to give him glory. It's to display his glory, either in creation or in mankind, in humankind. And of course, every promise that God's made, every aspect of his plan for all creation and all of human history, it will be and it has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. It's that song we sang earlier. Every promise is yes and amen in Christ. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 1.20, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. We speak amen through 
the glory and for the glory of God. We think about the promises of God from the promises, the promise to Adam, the promise to Noah, the promise to Abraham, the promise to Moses, the promise that Jesus made to his disciples that he would never leave, never forsake. Jesus has fulfilled every promise and will continue to fulfill those promises. Amen? And so not only is creation and history reveal this eternal truth. We also know that all of our lives affirm this eternal truth, that everything is from him, it's through him, and it's for him. All things in your life are graciously given from him. You ever think about that? So first, from him. All things in your life are graciously given from him. They're gracious, graciously given from the God who creates what is good, and that same God gives what is good. Amen? James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And I was reminded of this beautiful scripture few weeks ago, it was a Saturday, or excuse me, a Sunday morning, I was running around the courtyard, you know, here for services, and participated in the worship services, and after the service, the first service was over, my grandson, Maddox, who was attending the worship service, and he was given a little coloring sheet when he came in, after the worship service was over, he came up to me, and he said, Grandpa, I made something for you, and here it is, he knows my favorite color is blue. Now, don't read anything that. Don't read into that, okay? My favorite color is blue. And he knew it. And this is what it says below the, the beautiful uh, illustrated Bible verse. It says, what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Romans 8, 31. What a beautiful, perfect gift. God's word, and it's beautifully illustrated by my grandson. A beautiful gift. And so I want to ask you this, this evening, you think about your life, even today, even today, what is one thing that you've been blessed with? And how have you expressed thankfulness for that? What's one thing today that you've been blessed with? How many of you are feeling the warmth of that space heater that's located nearby? Raise your hand. Okay. That's a good and perfect gift from the Heavenly Father, all right? That is a gift, and we need to express thanks for that. The second aspect in our lives is we need to understand and be reminded and remember that all things in our life, all things in your life, all things in my life are lovingly filtered through Him. Nothing in all of creation or throughout history happens by chance or without the knowledge of God. And this means that nothing that comes to you doesn't go through the hands of our Heavenly Father, His loving hands. And we can take great peace and comfort in knowing that when trials come, and when troubles come, that we have one who is interceding for us. The same one who creates is the same one who is interceding for us, Jesus Christ. Listen to the words of Romans 8.34. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, Paul says, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Jesus Christ the creator, the almighty sustainer is interceding at the right hand of the Father for each one of us. Isn't that just a beautiful reminder that no matter the trouble, no matter the trial, that he is interceding on our behalf. And so how do we respond in those times of trials? First, we have to look at him. We can live in the present and we can look to the future, and all we have to do is look back at his faithfulness and see all that he has done for us and all that he will continue to do for us. We also can lean on him and lean into him. We can be comforted 
by him. The Holy Spirit, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you're here tonight, the Holy Spirit is in you. And Jesus said, the comforter is going to be with you. The Holy Spirit, God himself is in you. And in that, we can draw close to God in those seasons when we're facing trials and troubles. And we can also learn from him. We can learn from him. You see, God always has a lesson for us, doesn't he? And it seems especially in trials and troubles when those lessons are most profound and we seem to learn the most. Jesus is always teaching us. And so when we go through hard times, not if, but when we do, we can ask that question. We can say, Jesus, what are you teaching me in and through this. I was reminded that the disciples would have never experienced the calm and the peace of Jesus if they'd not gone through the storm. Do you remember that? Do you remember when the disciples are out in the boat and Jesus is asleep and the the storm comes up and and the disciples are all frantically worried, Jesus, Jesus, don't you care? We're going to die. And Jesus wakes up. He calms the storm. And then he gives them a gentle nudge about you of little faith. But that reminder that they needed to learn the calm, the peace, but they had to go through the storm. A great reminder that Jesus is always teaching us. And so what's one difficult thing that you have faced recently? And how has God sustained you? And what is God teaching you in that situation? Ask yourself that. And if it doesn't come to mind right away, ask God to show you. And I'm sure he will do that for you. And lastly, all things in your life are divinely purposed for him. Romans 8, 28 and 29 says this, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. You see, God is working for our good, for his eternal purpose. And sometimes we forget it's not for our purpose. It's for his purpose. He's working for the good. And it's not so that we could be lifted up and and high and mighty. It's that God would be glorified and that we would be conformed to the image of his son. That we would grow to be more like Jesus through the process. And I love the beauty of Romans 8, 28 and 29. A constant reminder that God is working for our good according to his purpose and It's so that we can become more like Jesus. Isn't that just a beautiful reminder of when we go through trials and when we go through troubles, that's what we have to look forward to, that God is for us. He is with us. And so we think about this verse, Romans 11, 36. As it's done for me, I trust that it will do the same for you. Here's five things that I think help us apply this verse in our lives and how we then can grow in our faith as we, we meditate on this verse, as we memorize this verse, as we internalize this verse. How can this verse help me grow in my faith? First, it moves us to pray. It moves us to pray more fervently and frequently, knowing that Jesus Christ is interceding on our behalf in all times, in all circumstances. We should be praying fervently and we should be praying frequently. Second, it strengthens us when we're feeling exhausted and discouraged, believing that he is with us and that he is for us, and that he is working for us in and through us in whatever we're going through. So if you're a a mother and, and a father and you're having to homeschool your kids in this season, 
and you're feeling st- stressed and maybe you're exhausted, remember that God is with you and he is for you and he is working for you and through you. Amen? It also gives us confidence and clarity in moments and seasons of uncertainty, chaos, and confusion. And I got news for you. We're not through with it yet, are we? That is just such a beautiful reminder. It gives us confidence and clarity in moments and seasons of uncertainty, chaos, and confusion. Trusting that the same God who created and sustains the universe, that he has a plan, and that plan is still unfolding, and he has a purpose for us as well. And fourth, this verse provides us with comfort in days of sickness, sorrow, and despair. It comforts us. We can embrace the one who created us, the one who loves us, the one who has an eternal plan and purpose for us. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Nor will he ever, never allow you to be ashamed. God's promises fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And lastly, this verse emboldens us to share the gospel courageously and compassionately. Courageously because we have the God of the universe working for us and working through us. And knowing that every relationship that we have in our life, it's not by accident, by chance, or random that God has allowed us to interact with people who don't yet know him. And we have the mission, the ministry of reconciliation on his behalf. A powerful reminder. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a coworker. Or maybe for those who are in school, maybe it's a school classmate or someone on your sports team that doesn't yet know Jesus. We have to be ready and willing to share our testimony, to share what God has done in our life through Jesus Christ. And each one of us doesn't just have one testimony of what God has done, but we have many testimonies of what God is doing in our lives. And so tonight what we wanted to do was we wanted to take a moment and invite a couple of gentlemen up to share a testimony of what God has been doing in their lives over the past six to eight months in this season. So first I'm going to invite Peter Adame up, and Peter's going to come and share a little bit. And we're going to do this interview style. And uh, so I'm going to invite Peter to come on up here. And Peter, um, grab a chair there. And uh, for most, you may not know Peter. So I'm just going to ask Peter, Peter, just give us just kind of a synopsis, a summary of of what you've gone through uh, this past summer, really beginning with COVID and then where you're at today. Yeah, thank you, Sean. Um, Hello, everyone. So I moved to Monterey about six years ago, and I've been very blessed where God has always had his hand in my career. Um, I've been fortunate to work at the Monterey Bay Aquarium for the past five years. It's an amazing organization, and I started as a temp and then moved over to different divisions where I worked in conservation and science, which was just fascinating and something I never dreamed of doing. Um, And I eventually became the outreach manager for the Seafood Watch program. And it was a dream job. I was inspiring people to make better seafood choices for a healthy ocean, working with chefs, um, restaurants, retailers, to just support better practices and to help marine life. Um, And I just was very lucky with that job. I really loved it. Um, But unfortunately, the pandemic hit and all of a sudden the doors were closed to the aquarium and we lost our main source of revenue. Mm. And, um, you know, I was working from home for the first month and then we had a round of layoffs and I I made it past that first round, Um, but more time went by and the aquarium was still closed and unfortunately I got let go. Mm. And I was surprised because I was doing online communications, social media, and I thought, you know, I was safe there, and so I was caught off guard, and um, yeah, it was just um, a surprise. Yeah, I remember that night, Peter Peter and I are in the same Bible study, and so I have the honor and privilege of leading a 
a group of young adult men um, who, in a Bible study, and I remember when Peter came and shared that with the group, and we all really grieved, grieved with him and grieved for him, and, and just to see the guys come around and pray him. Now, Peter, I know that that's not the end of the story. God, God did amazing thing in this season in you and through you, and so can you kind of help us understand um, how God really grew you in this and how might that be an encouragement for someone out here that maybe has either had the, the challenge of, of losing a job or maybe is facing the loss of a job? Yeah, I know I'm probably not the only person here that may have experienced loss during this season. And um, for me, I, I was surprised where there was a lot of emotion going on in all my coworkers that lost their work. But for me, it wasn't necessarily tears of hardship, tears of depression, tears of fear. It was tears of gratitude. As I looked back, as I'm cleaning out my desk, as I'm reflecting on the time I've had, I just realized how blessed I was in what God had done in my life and what I got to experience and the amazing work I got to do and the connections I made around the world. Um, and so that really gave me a lot of strength, maybe almost a little too much, where I got a little <laughs> cocky and was like, I can get a new job, no problem. <laughs> Um, but that wasn't the case. Um, you know, a month went by, yeah. and another month, and another month, and you're filling out all these applications, and you know, doing your resume, and not hearing back, and it can be very disheartening. But I had the Bible study that these guys I was meeting with every Tuesday night. It was online, and it was just such a great reminder that I don't have to give my life to anxiety and fear. I can actually enjoy this time and focus on growing myself spiritually, physically, yeah, yeah. maybe surfing a little bit more with the free time. <laughs> um, and, you know, sure enough, I, God spoke to me and told me to reach out to this mm -hmm. one group that mm -hmm. I hadn't connected with in a long time. I was kept seeing their ads pop up on social media, and I was listening to NPR as I was doing some other work in the car, and... Um, I reached out to them, and it's not I got the job there. It was the director said, you should really reach out to this one business, Loose America. Um, I think they would be good for you, and they might be looking for someone. And so I reached out to them, sent them my resume, and they invited me out the next day. They weren't hiring initially, but they just really liked my experience, and I had a round of interviews with them. Then it's a family-owned business, so then I had to meet the owner's wife, get her <laughs> approval, of course, and and I've yeah, I'm the new communications and sustainability manager at Loose America, who's Amen. one of the largest Amen. wholesalers Amen. of seafood, and yeah. thank you. Amen, Peter. Yeah. yeah, it's been really interesting, and just I feel so blessed. And for those listening that are experiencing hardship during this time, I just want to remind you that there is power in prayer, mm. and you don't need to give your life into anxiety and depression because God is in charge. And once you can really let go of that and believe in that and have that faith, it, it's so much more relaxing and um, he'll take care of you. And to be involved in the church and to get a Christian community, it's so important because it grounds you and it reminds you of what's porn, important in today's world. Amen. Thank you, Peter. Well, can we give Peter a, a applause, a round of thanks for, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Peter. God bless you. Uh, so another gentleman we wanted to invite today is, uh, is Mike Steelman. So I'm going to invite Mike to come on up here. Now, Mike didn't experience the, uh, the loss of a job or loss of income. Uh, Mike and his family experienced um, the, the proximity and the power and the force of the river fires. And so I wanted to give Mike the opportunity to share uh, a little bit of his experience through that process. So Mike, just can you give us a kind of a snapshot of what you went through, you and your family in that Sure, process? yeah, I'll try um, real quickly here. Um, so the river fire, yeah. So we are, if you take a picture, um, most people here are familiar with the, the local fires we've had. But uh, if you take a, a, a look at the map of the river fire, the only point where it actually reached down and touched River Road was right next to our house. And so uh, we had the um, unique privilege of evacuating. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and after my family and I evacuated the first night, I went back because I just knew that there was something there 
uh, we have a small family ranch that is antiquated in a lot of different ways and, and there's no way that uh, someone can just come onto the property and know where the water tank is uh, and let alone how to get water out of it. It's that old. And so I just felt real deep conviction to stay and to fight um, with the little that I could do. And um, uh, I don't know, it's just, it was a lot of prayer, a lot of um, not anxiety, but concern, I think is a better word, way to put yeah. it. Um, and so, yeah, I hung out for, I didn't see my family for almost a week. Uh, we, uh, I just hunkered down and, and was calling the local fire guys that I can connect with and texting a couple connections and um, was very fortunate to be able to have um, a solid connection with the firefighters who did show up yeah. and, um, and, and do what we could. Mm -hmm. And I uh, can't remember the question, but we're yeah. going to yeah. um, talk about the, the struggle yeah. and the, the journey of um, pairing with God, you know, and, and working with him um, because it's easy to sit back and say, okay, Lord, here you go. And, and, or maybe it's not easy, but it's easy to say that but to do it, right? But also, I think we, we, we partner with the Lord. He wants to work with us and work through us. He uses people. And I was extremely reminded about that when I was watching this fire. My son and I would go up before we got evacuated and hike the mountain to see how far away the fire was coming. It is and how, how long we have until it's coming down. And uh, it, it came pretty quick, you know? And I was hoping and praying and hoping and praying. And um, finally, we just had to, had to leave. But... Again, when I was staying back, um, a couple of friends were texting on me, making sure, are you, are you okay? Can I help? Can we come over? Whatever else. I said, no, it's cool. It's, it's going to be fine. And um, lo and behold, uh, the next night, I had some eight or nine guys show up, um, of which one might be a believer. Most of them were unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And one of them, um, my, my good friend Cody, he says, you know, stop praying, man. You've already prayed. And God's answered your prayer. I'm here. You know, and and I love a that. humble guy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> totally. And so it was just a, a a great reminder that God uses people. Yeah. Um, he uses His people to spread His gospel, mm -hmm. but He can use a donkey. He can use your, your good friend who yeah. knows it all yeah. and and can cut a wonderful yeah. sixty five foot tree down. But yeah, yeah. So no, and Mike, one of the things that I had a chance to talk with you a couple of weeks ago too was just at that point where you felt completely exhausted. Oh, yeah. Just the, I, I'd love for you to share how in that moment of surrender, there was still this desire to praise God and trust in his faithfulness. And if you just share yeah. that with everybody. Yeah, with the journey of, of doing what we could and, and, and using the backhoe and people showing up with excavators at my house to help push things back. I mean, it was amazing. Um, through that all, I'm praying in my soul, praying deep in my gut just to... Um, there's a piece of and a surrender of just letting go, knowing that, you know, it's just stuff, right? If it did burn, it's just stuff. But my life is in God's hands, and and the fact that uh, when you let go, there's there's a release there, and there's an intimacy that happens when you when you are able to look God in the eyes, if you can say it like that way. Um, but after fighting and after being exhausted of four days of no sleep, literally maybe 30 minutes, um, the, the, the fires kept popping up, you know, and, and spot fires that the helicopter has to come, all this stuff. There came a day on Friday, and this was my day, right? Friday, uh, Shoreline had an online service, a worship service, and prayer for all the fires and victims going on. And I stood on the balcony of the, of the top house and looked out all in the black on the hillside here that came down right to the house. And my, I'm texting my wife and I said, hey, I'm going to go online and worship with Shoreline. And she did as well. And that was the, the bawling moment, just <laughs> unload. And, and the release of emotion and all that stress, because we're human beings, we still carry things in ways yeah. that sometimes you don't realize. Yeah. And just being able to lift my hands up on this balcony mm -hmm. and look out over all the charred hillside here and the charred hillside here and how yeah. it was just a circle of protection around our, our ranch. Yeah. Um, it, oh man, just being able to give God the glory on that. Because yeah. in my wife's words, she says, you know, 
I'm excited to see after the fact that because I know there's going to be a circle of protection around yeah, us, yeah. and literally it was. There's yeah. black on both sides of our house, yeah. and um, and those those other people that didn't get that, you know, yeah. they might have lost a, a building or a home yeah. or something. Yeah. But um, even through that, you know, I mean, we could have lost it, and I would be still here talking about the faithfulness of God. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. So. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Can we thank Mike for that? Uh, just great, great. I mean, great reminder. Uh, so, Lord Jesus, uh, we do thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness, your sovereignty in both of these young men's lives and in our lives and, Lord, in, in people we know and family members. And, Lord, thank you that you are faithful, that you are trustworthy, and that you have a plan and purpose. And so, Lord, we continue to give this night to you, gl your glory, and to your praise, Father. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.